Here with us is uh, Mark DeVries. Mark is here leading a sustainable youth ministry conference, and the conference is built on a book that he authored by the same name. Uh, Mark, welcome, and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Well, um, I guess, uh, you know, one of my things that uh, I'm defined by the most is that I've been at my church doing youth ministry for about the last 24 years, uh, which makes me old. And, uh, and I'm uh, in that process have um, really had a heart for uh, not only to how to individual youth ministers sustain themselves, but also how to individual youth ministries continue to stay fresh and stable kind of at the same time. And you're here uh, telling youth ministries, uh, youth ministers in Virginia how they can do that. Exactly. I, I hope they're able to hear that. Okay. <laughs> What uh, what pointers are you giving them about how to uh, make themselves and, and their ministries sustainable? Mm. Well, most folks in youth ministry um, come into the field of youth ministry because they're just passionate about students. They're really good about being with kids. They love to create programs. They have a high level of creativity and uh, a lot of natural intuitive relational skills. Uh, but that really to some extent only go so far. Um, the two gaps that we see missing most frequently uh, is the, the ability to create sustainable structures. In other words, to create a system that is not based on an individual or a single program, but to, to create processes so that regardless of who the leader is, it continues to move forward. The other is that there is a, there's a gap, and in fact there's a seminar being taught uh, here in these two days about being an emotionally healthy youth worker and often youth workers are so committed to seeing life change in young people that their own growth ends and uh, and that's part of the reason the burnout rate is so high why the tenure of youth ministers is so brief and so we're just working on how do we move from being stuck and doing things the way they've always been done uh, to building systems that can create some sustainability. If you were sitting on um, on a plane beside a youth minister, and um, uh, you were about to land before you you realized who this guy was, and he says, "Mark, in in two minutes that I have before we land, tell me how to be a good youth minister." What would you tell him in that two minute time span? Well, I would. I I think I'd start with. It really begins with you. Um, it begins with tending to your own heart and um, creating a rhythm. Um, you know, I, I'm just convinced there's there's been a lot of obsession in the church about, and there's a generational divide around um, around work and working hard and time off. And you know, typically, the younger generation doesn't understand their senior pastor who says, "I never take a day off." And um, and I think there's a balance. I, I, I don't know that the scripture ever suggests um, that there's a certain number of hours that are more holy than other number of hours to work. What it does say is that there ought to be a rhythm in our week and that we ought to have a day of rest that really is set apart to be uniquely attentive to God uh, in ways that we are, uh, it's not during the rest of the time, six days of work and one day of rest. So I would say the first thing for a young youth pastor would be, I'd, I'd want to see him build a, a rhythm into into every week of his or her life. Um, the the next thing I would do uh, would be to say, um, what you do, do it deliberately. Um, most folks, there there are a million things to do, and you know the Pareto principle: twenty percent of your work gets eighty percent of your results. And that means 80% of your work really gets somewhat trivial results. And so, unfortunately, there's very little filtering that goes on in terms of deciding what makes the most difference. And so I, I would help, you know, work on identifying what are those high leverage things that are going to produce the sort of results you're looking for. Um, and, uh, and then we, we talked just a little bit about um, moving from feeling like he's a victim or she's a victim of you know a lot of youth workers say the church won't let me or people don't volunteer or you don't understand the way this church is and 
I'm really convinced that youth pastors have an incredible power to architect a unique culture that can become healthy and viral in the church. Even, even when the church may not be all that healthy, the youth ministry can create a greenhouse of uh, some really healthy things happening, which can in fact bring healing to the rest of the church. But often what happens is a youth worker will, um, will move into a sort of whiny, negative, um, it's all the church's fault, nobody understands me, which really is a voluntary way of becoming very powerless. And uh, I just, I, I would love for youth mm. workers to, to be able to grasp the immense power that they do have. Um, and, and, you know, there are a, a dozen systems, just like the body is a system of systems, um, or a dozen or so systems that we'd say need to be in place for a healthy youth ministry. But I would say those few would be, you know, where I'd start. Because it's time to get off the plane. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, well, Mark, what else would you like to say to Virginia Baptist youth ministers or Virginia Baptists in general about the, the significance of youth ministry? Well, the one piece we talked about this morning is that uh, the normal church tends to vastly underinvest or misinvest in youth ministry. And... Um, the truth is that youth ministry just is a very expensive operation and one of the images we talked about I asked folks in the group to raise their hand if they had a steeple on their church and then I picked one of them and I said um, what would happen if a tornado came and blew the steeple off your church she said like that oh they'd fix it I said well what if it was going to be expensive they'd fix it well, what if there was a recession they'd fix it they'd find a way and so what I said back to our youth pastors, which I'd love for churches to understand as well, we don't have a resource problem in our churches. Uh, we don't see the acuteness of the need. We don't see the brokenness of kids in the same way we see, we see the brokenness of the steeple. But if we see it, and when we see it, I'm absolutely convinced that the Christians in the Tennessee Baptist Convention will step to the plate and generously support. But I think it's our mission, it's incumbent on us as those who get to shape the, uh, the picture of youth ministry, um, it's our mission to hold up that picture clearly and to show uh, churches what an immense return can come for the kingdom and the investment in the next generation. And um, so I, I, I believe we're raising up a generation of young people who uh, have a call to do youth ministry in a way that may be different than we did it and hopefully that means that they may do it a little longer than we did it. So um, I'm thrilled about what I see happening. I'm thrilled about what Ken is doing and uh, the, the pockets of really deliberate mentoring that's going on all around the conference and all around the state. One more scenario. You're standing at a stoplight and an elderly gentleman comes up beside you He's going one direction, you're going the other, waiting for the light to change. During this light change, you find out he's the pastor of, a, of an aged Virginia Baptist church with no youth. And he says to you when he finds out who you are, oh, you're just the guy I need to talk to because what we need is a youth minister to come in and get all these youth coming to our church again. So what would you say to this guy? I would say the instinct, the impetus behind that desire is absolutely right. The solution is a little bit off, a little bit sideways, but your desire to say, we want to be a faithful church that lives out Deuteronomy 6 and impresses these things on our children. Uh, we, want to, we want to be that kind of church. That's absolutely right. And in order to do that, um, I mean, the easiest thing I would say is walking across the street here, we can't talk about that, but I think if we go to Starbucks, <laughs> we can start mapping out a process <laughs> that we can do that. Um, there, uh, there are, if a church is willing to pay the price, um, and generally when it comes to kids, most churches are, once they understand. If the church is willing to pay the price, uh, every church can have a thriving healthy ministry to young people sixth grade to twelfth grade 
and uh, and that's that's the message we just wanted to know is this is not it's not impossible it's not a magic it's not it's not a roll of the dice uh, we we like to talk about the difference between investing and gambling and um, most churches when it comes to youth ministry they just roll the dice and they just say you know we're going to find us a 23 year old with an earring a guitar and a floppy bible and that's going to take care of all of our problems and we like to say no maybe we'll walk a little slower be a little more deliberate and in fact our little organization youth ministry architects that's what we do is walk with churches slowly deliberately through that process of going from where they are to where they want to be fantastic well, thank you very much, uh, Mark. I appreciate your coming.